my name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome back to another video here that I'm presenting on YouTube centered around Power Automate. Now today's use case is I have a Microsoft form that I'd like to back up into SharePoint. So I want to collect the responses from the form, run it through a flow to directly enter into SharePoint. However, I have some issues with every time I try to put that in there. I have a question on my form that is a multi-select answer. And each time that I run my flow, I get a weird result into my SharePoint list. So what we're gonna look at today is how we can set up our flow using a select statement to enable that multi-select question to take the JSON, format it, and place it into a SharePoint list properly so it mirrors how I would directly enter it into that SharePoint list from the beginning. So let's take a look at that form itself, take a look at the SharePoint list and how we are gonna set up a flow with Power Automate to get everything outlined exactly how we wanna see it. All right, so Right now, all we have is our Microsoft form here. This is a very basic form that I set up with just three different questions, just centered around, you know, what is your favorite color or favorite colors if you wanna multi-select that. Now for the form, I have a few things here to uh, collect, just a simple a name field, so that's a text style question. I have a single choice option here with our age group, so just simply select what is your age group. And then I also have a multi-select option here for question number three, what are your favorite colors? So just asking someone to add in maybe two, three, whatever they may have for their favorite colors in that case. And then what I'd like that to do is to back up inside of a SharePoint list. So I'm gonna take a look at my SharePoint list real quick. Come on over here and you can see directly I've added in one test that I've already done that I've just simply come in here to our list added in some uh, some answers to those same questions and see how they're stored on our list. And what I'd like to do is replicate this directly from the form into the list. So let's take a look at a flow that I've pre-built a little bit with some of those steps to go ahead and, and take that process. And then we'll take a look at um, how to make this work a little bit nicer. So simply put, our trigger here is when a response is submitted, on our form, there's my favorite colors form. Okay, it's the exact one I'm pointing to. What I then wanna do is get the response details from that form based on the response ID. So whichever response comes in, and there's my dynamic content there, whichever response comes in, I wanna then go ahead and use that specific response to place into my SharePoint list. So how do I do that? Well, I come over here and I select create item. Okay, create an item in SharePoint. So far, I've pointed to the site address, I've pointed to my list, and now I just need to add in my dynamic content in those three questions to write into the SharePoint list. So for the first one, for our title here, like that's our default, but that's gonna be my first one is our name. The age group value here, okay? We're gonna come in here and with our age group value, go ahead and select enter custom value. I don't wanna hard code it in, I wanna put in some dynamic content. So enter custom value is the way to go. So I'll just add that in here. And then the same thing for our favorite colors. I wanna add in some of that dynamic content. So I enter custom value right here and then I can add that in, what are your favorite colors? Now what you'll notice is right away, there's a bit of a difference between our age group value here and our favorite colors value area to input. The big difference is our age group value right here, that's a single choice option, okay? And because it's a single choice option, it's just another field that we would see anywhere else. When we get into the multi-choice option here, that's what you'll notice this other section down at the bottom, where if you wanted to, you can add in another item here as another value to add to hard code in or to dynamically put in because it's multiple choices. If it's multiple choices, we have multiple fields to be able to add into if we so chose. Okay, in this case, what we'd like to do is make that dynamic. We don't wanna hard code anything in there. We want it to be directly taken from the form itself. So let's take a look at what this looks like if I were to run it right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save from here. I'm gonna test it by just adding in a, an additional um, input into our form here and see how it, it pulls into SharePoint. So I'm gonna hit test, I'm gonna do a manual test and go from there. 
just waiting on it to come all the way through. I wanna make sure it gets to, there it is. And I'm gonna come in here to our SharePoint list. I'll call this Jonathan's test two from the form. Okay, I'll put my age group. I'm gonna to try to match exactly what the first one is, just to see like a side by side, and then we can play around with it a little bit. So 30 to 45, and I believe we chose yep, red and blue. So red and blue. Okay, so we're matching the same thing here, just adding in a little bit of a different title. There we go, and hit submit. And now here goes our flow. and it's run successfully. So I wanna take a look at my SharePoint list and I should see on my SharePoint list, let me just refresh it real fast. There we have our second test, but this one's coming from the form. My age group has come back the exact same way that I had it originally, but we are seeing a little bit of a difference here when we get to our multi-select option. For the favorite colors, I'm not seeing single values except I'm seeing a list of items here, and you can see it's listed in a little bit of a JSON style. So we're gonna have to take a look at how we can change our uh, flow from this point to try to get it to input the data exactly as we see it. So later on, if we wanted to extract this data, say in Power BI, or to create a report from it, everything's gonna populate in the exact way that we wanna see it. So let's go back to our flow here. I'm gonna hit uh, actually, we're gonna well, let's do this. Let's take a look at our get response details and see how our data is actually being returned. So if you come in here from our get response details and the outputs of that response itself, you will notice that when we get that output, here is the way it's stored when we're looking through it. Okay, so it's the output of that, and that's the exact same list that we're getting. And if we come into our create item it's being stored in this direct way as well. Now here is where we can take a look at ex how uh, Power Automate and how SharePoint is trying to understand the data, okay? See, there is our input, there's our value. This is some JSON formatting here. Okay, there is the value, so that's the name of the item and the actual value that we're looking through, okay? How it's being input. Now if you look at it here, we are seeing that we have our color red and our double quotes there, because that's a text string but it's being led by a backslash and followed by a backslash for each value. Now what's happening is because we have that backslash in there, it's not reading properly when it tries to pull into, into SharePoint, as it tries to write it in. So because of that, you can see here our favorite colors, how it's being stored is the exact same way. Now, if we come into our, our, our flow itself, we need to take a look at how that's being written in here and what this step is actually looking as far as an input. So if we come back over here to our create item action here on SharePoint, on the top right corner here, you can see we have the option to switch to an input array right there. When we select this, what it provides us is the opportunity to declare how we want the data to be shown and add it in for SharePoint. So let's select that real quick here. And we can see here, okay, it wants it to be a single item without that backslash. It's looking for that JSON style array here, okay? However, we don't want that backslash to come in. That's where our data is. So we wanna make sure it's matching this exact input. So the way to do this is we actually need to format JSON in order to properly match what is expected inside of this action. So to do that, we're gonna use a couple of our data operations here with Power Automate. So prior to this create item action, I'm gonna insert a new step. And this action here that I want to insert is an action called select. What select allows us to do is essentially transform the shape of objects by adding, removing, renaming element in each part of that array. So we're working with JSON in order to essentially shape it in the format that we need to help us understand exactly how things are gonna be added in there. Okay, so in the from field, what we want to do is say the, um, answer here for our favorite colors. Okay, it's coming back from our list here. Okay, I'm gonna come back here. We wanna take this favorite color field and the same one here from our SharePoint list. Okay, and we wanna format that 
in the proper JSON formatting. So what we need to do in the from area is what do we want to format? Well, if we come on over here to our expression here, okay, we select from, we're gonna to go to expression, we want to come down here and take a look at our JSON conversion. So you can see here, we wanna convert the input to a JSON type value. So that's exactly what we need, add in that JSON there. And then what is the input that we want to convert? Well, in this case, we wanna convert that multi-select field. So I'm gonna to come to my dynamic content here, and we wanna get the response details here. Okay, what are your favorite colors? So we're gonna add that in here. Okay, that's what we wanna convert. I'm gonna hit okay. And now, how do I want to map this out? Well, what we want, again, is to match what we have here. So the, the key here that we want is our value. So we're gonna type in value. And then what do we want to match it with? Well, we wanna match it with each item that is now being parsed out with this JSON and put it directly here in our list. So over here in our expression, we're gonna type in item and then add that directly into our value there. Okay, so again, what we're looking to do is match the exact formatting that is expected within this create an item step here in order to properly display it in SharePoint. We're using the select action here to format that input in a JSON so we can now take each and every single item within that as a separate piece. We're gonna label that with a value and then each item separately after that. All right, so now we can add in the output from that select statement here inside of our create item action. So let's clear out all of this in here, okay? And once we clear out that, that expected JSON that is coming from uh, our output there, from our, our action here, get response details, we can now input the output from that select action as our dynamic content. So we're gonna use that output there Okay, to format the JSON and then properly input it into our SharePoint list. So if we hit save, let's go ahead and test this now. And what we're gonna do is one more test from our form. So I'll do another manual test in this case, just to go through the process. I could have used an automatic one. We can do another manual test here. So I'm gonna come here, use a manual test, add in another item. I'll call this, let's see, I'll call this test three from the form and then match it the same way here. And then we'll do one more to make sure everything's coming back. All right, so I'm gonna go here and call this Jonathan's test three from the form. Whoop. Make sure I wanna match that up as, as much as I can. We'll do the same thing here. And I believe I chose red and blue and hit submit. Make sure my flow's good. Here we go. And we'll come back to our flow. And as it runs through, let's take a look. It's run successfully. Let's take a look at the output now that we're getting from here. So if you look at the output that we're adding in or that's being used from our select statement that's now being used as input into the SharePoint list, you'll notice we, we already have a different value here. Instead of having that list of items between red and blue that's separated that in that JSON format, we now have two different items that are being pulled through. So two separate choices here. So now we have those two choices. Let's see how they comes here with our favorite colors. There's a value, there's another one. We should have on our SharePoint list, there it is, two separate choices rather than one single choice in a list there. So we now have the exact format that we wanna see. So if I came in here to our form and did it one more time, try to do another response here. Let's put in Okay, we can say this is from the form again. I'll put in a different group. Maybe I'll go back to, in a few years. Let's do three colors this time and let's submit it. Okay, we've now run that flow. Again, it should be continuously going through here. Let me, there it is. I just refreshed my page there and now you can see my age group still again but now I have three different values. 
that are all provided the same output, the exact same format that we wanna see in order for us to actually have this stored properly. Now, because it's being stored properly, what we can do is we can take that data and aggregate it down in the future. Once we've collected all of the data, we can now build if we wanted a Power BI report, or we can send that information somewhere else via email or store it in Excel or do all the other great things that we can do within Power Automate to make all of the data here more accessible for us, not just store it in SharePoint, but do something with it, right? That's always the end goal for us. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me here today as we take a look at how we can take data collected from a Microsoft form and, sit and store it into SharePoint. But we looked at not just being able to take that raw data, store it, and how we can format that data especially coming from a select choice of options. In this case, we looked at not just a single select, but a multi-select, and that if we wanted to format properly to be able to input inside of SharePoint, we need to use a little bit of some of our JSON skills here. We use the select data operation today to do that, where we can transform or shape that output from our form to make sure it's in the exact way that is necessary to be stored inside of SharePoint. Thanks again for joining me as we take another look inside of Power Automate. Stay tuned for more videos here as we take a look at Power Automate, its use cases, and how we can best modify actions and steps to match our exact needs for whatever data operation that we need.